everyone. Today we are talking about winning by letting go. And letting go and knowing when to quit is actually the courageous thing to do. Balancing building a successful business and being a superstar mom is hard. And yet, in today's digital world, it's more common than ever. The question becomes, how do we successfully grow a business and children at the same time? Join us for a candid conversation as we share our insights into marketing and motherhood. I'm Angela Reeder. And I'm Jessie Valle. Welcome to the Marketing Moms Podcast. Okay, so today's episode was actually inspired by a client of Angela's and just kind of the whole question of how do you know when to give something up, right? Because all we hear about is persistence and consistency and just pick one thing, stick to it. But there does come a point where you need to let something go or you just need to give up. And it's not necessarily just in business or in your personal life, just in general, there are reasons you should let something go and, and give up. And maybe we shouldn't even say give up because that typically has a negative connotation, but it doesn't have to be negative. So my first question to you, Angela, is how did you come up with this topic and like what happened to spark this that we needed to have a conversation about it? Okay. So I was helping a client with a little tech issue on their site, getting a pixel set up or something. It wasn't a hugely big, complicated thing. And I was on a video call with them. They had a friend with them that was trying to help them kind of sort through what I was explaining and things like that. And she was so tired (laughs) And frustrated. She kept saying, I hate this. I hate doing this. This is awful. I just want to quit. I don't want to do this anymore. Like, I hate every time I have to open this site. I just absolutely, I hate it. And, you know, we'd talk a little more and then she would start in, like, I hate this. I hate doing this. I'm so overwhelmed. And at first, I was kind of thinking, okay, you know, tech issues can be really frustrating, it can feel overwhelming. But the more she said it and the more I listened to the tone, the more I was like, oh, she means it. Like, she's done. She's over it. And she had just kept going and kept pushing herself because she felt like she couldn't quit. She'd been in it a certain amount of time. She put a certain amount of money or effort into it. I don't know all the details, but it was just, I felt so bad listening to her because I was like, this is making her miserable. And that's not like business shouldn't make you miserable. (laughs) No, no, that's not even healthy from a personal standpoint, like a mental health standpoint. And so it really got me thinking about you know, recognizing when it's time to let something go. And Mm -hmm. you and I both have had different phases of our business that we've had to kind of let go to move on and, and grow our business or shift our business to help keep it healthy or for our own mental health. And so it Mm -hmm. just kind of really sparked something listening to her feel so frustrated and helpless and feel like, I really hope there's not more people out there (laughs) that feel this way and that it's, it's important to recognize that it's okay to change direction. It's okay to give up on a thing. I, you know, like you said, give up kind of has a negative connotation. It's okay to let a thing go or to quit pursuing a thing. And like you said, we have a lot of just be consistent and keep pursuing it and hustle and really push for it and like keep going and don't give up. And yeah, that's important. Like you don't want to start something and be like, oh, this is kind of hard and then give up. But you also don't want to make yourself miserable trying to do a thing that ultimately you don't want to do that you don't enjoy and that isn't making you money. (laughs) Yeah. And it's not fulfilling you. And it, to me, it's also just like, well, if it's not, if it's not even working towards something you want in your life anymore, that's when you really need to consider whether you just need to give it up. So we actually came up with a few different reasons how you can kind of gauge whether it's time to let something go. So we're going to kind of run through our list here and 
just how to recognize when it is time to yeah. let go and over just I'm I'm just not putting in the work, right? Yeah. So reason number one would be that consistent lack of passion or motivation. Like it, it's normal. It's totally normal for you to feel like, you know, I'm just not feeling it today. That's fine. Right. But if it's consistent, like if I woke up every time that Angela and I were going to record and be like, I just can't get myself out of bed. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't like it. That's like a sign. Red flag. Listen to me. Yeah. There certainly are days because we record this early there. Uh, yeah. 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 In the last two years, there have been times where I wake up and I'm just like, no, Angela forced me out of bed. I don't want to get out of bed. But that's because I just don't want to get out of bed. It has absolutely yeah. nothing to do with the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to like actually sit and analyze what is truly gone. And if you truly have a lack of passion or motivation for what it is that you're doing, and you're not finding any joy or satisfaction in it, you got to listen. That's a sign. Yeah. Yeah, if every time you touch your computer, you're like, I don't want to even look at this, that's that's a pretty big indicator that like maybe it's time to let that go or shift or change or do something. Mm-hmm. And like Jesse said, everybody has those times where they're like, I don't want to do this. I just am not feeling it. Or, you know, I like to tell Jesse, it's I'm having a I want to burn my business to the ground moment. Mm-hmm. But you know, it's, if it's consistent, if it's every day, if it's every time you think about it, then that's, that's a pretty big flag. Yeah. Like typically when Angela says that to me, cause she does, she inevitably says that to me once or twice a year. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, all the time I've known. <laughs> but here's the thing. When she says, I want to burn it down. I always know she actually still has passion for what she does and no, she doesn't actually want to burn it down. She just needs a freaking break. Like yeah. you just need to take a vacation. You just need a <laughs> mental health break. Yes. Not because you hate what you do because you love what you do. Mm-hmm. And, and I can see the passion. I know you're struggling. Like, I know you still love what you do. Therefore, yeah. when you say I'm ready to burn it down, it's not a quitting moment. You have to just, again, you you have to analyze beyond what's happening right now and look at the big picture. And big picture, I know Angela just needs a break. It's not that she needs to bring her business to the ground. (laughs) (laughs) She's like, I'm going to pour that. I'm like, no, you're not. No, No, it's fine. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So the next one is if it's having an unhealthy impact on your well-being. If it is negatively affecting your physical health, your emotional health, your mental health, your relationships, that could be what it is. It's a big sign. It's a big red flag to let you know it it might be time to let this go. Yeah. So, okay. Many moons ago, actually eight years ago, we had a dog before we had children. And when my first baby came, I felt sad looking at that dog every day. Like she would just lay there while I was feeding the baby, taking care of the baby, all all the things. It was just a life of sitting there staring at me. And I felt internally, like internal turmoil over it. I ended up giving the dog to my parents who had another dog and they had a big yard and the dog is still alive today and has a very happy life. But that was one of the hardest, like I had taken her a couple times and said I couldn't do it and took her back home. And so finally I just had to give her and it wasn't because I couldn't take care of her. It's because it was so negatively impacting my mental health to know that I wasn't giving her the life she could have that I realized it was time to let go it was time for me to not have that dog because I knew she could do better without me that was one of the hardest things I ever had to do which is crazy because now eight years later I want a dog again (laughs) 
my kids are older. I can handle a dog again. I want a dog. Like I have to remember that me, brand new mom, is totally different than eight years old. Yes. <laughs> But at the time, I was like, I, I just, it was, it had such a negative impact on me to know yeah. that I was hurting that dog. And so I, I had to realize that it wasn't me giving up on her. It was me giving her a better life. Like yeah. because she was staring at me feeding a baby all day. Right. Yeah. And it, I mean, it can have big like physical impacts I mm -hmm. I've known people that had had been sick were sick all the time just kind of chronically ill who quit their job changed jobs and realized it was the job it was the stress it was the environment they were in that was making them sick yeah. <laughs> like, it, was so Ill? it can make you you know the mental stress can make you physically ill or the environment you're in could be making you ill yeah. emotional distress um having impact on your relationships like those are all big red flags that maybe this is not the path that you should be on yeah yeah all right the next one would also be like a lack of progress or improvement despite the efforts so if you are actually putting in the time and effort into something like truly and you're the only one that knows if you're actually putting in the effort yeah you're actually putting in that effort but you're not seeing any progress or improvement at all maybe your energy is better spent elsewhere <laughs> yes yeah and again this takes a lot of self-reflection over whether or not you are actually putting in the effort because if mm -hmm. you look at it and you go man i just keep trying and nothing's happening but you're like I really could be doing more. I really should be mm -hmm. doing more. Like that's one thing. But I feel like I'm giving it my all. I'm putting my heart and soul into this and I am not getting anywhere. Then it's probably time to change tracks. <laughs> yeah. And, and, it, and it's not necessarily your fault. Like just because you're trying a thing and it's not working doesn't mean that you're doing it wrong or you're bad at it. Like, mm -hmm. There are a lot of things that kind of like the economy people aren't buying mm -hmm. as much or the region you're in, the thing you're selling is just not useful or common or popular or whatever. Like there's a lot of external factors. And so if you're putting everything into it and you're not getting anywhere, giving up doesn't mean that you didn't try hard or that you were a failure or that there was something wrong with you. It just means that that wasn't the right time or situation for that. Yeah. Another thing it, it reminds me of is when I went from full-time business owner to part-time business owner and um, back to an employee. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the hardest things because I felt like if I accepted being an employee, that it would mean that I was a failure at business. But that's not what it meant at all because... I have a full-time job, a W-2 job, so that I can have health insurance for my family. I can right. have benefits. I have health insurance. I have vacation. I have, um, you know, like, what about life insurance? Like, <laughs> I've got, yeah. oh, oh, retirement. I have things, benefits for my family, and I still get to have my business on the side. And Angela and I still have this podcast on the side. So, that's the other thing is like, because I'm not full-time my own business doesn't mean I had to give it all up. Like I still have it. It's just my, it, like, it just looks different now. So that's the other thing is like when you quote unquote quit or give up, it doesn't mean it has to like completely leave your life forever. It just could mean a pivot and it looks different and that's okay. Yeah. Yep. And I was actually, I was thinking about you with the next one too, where if your goal, if the thing you're working on no longer aligns with your values mm -hmm. or your long-term vision. And it, it made me think of you, well, both of us, but you especially mm -hmm. leaving teaching to start your business because you oh, wanted gosh, to be home yeah. with your kid. Like mm -hmm. sometimes your goals change. Sometimes your value and your visions change and it's okay to leave behind the thing you were doing to work toward those new goals. And that's why sometimes you can't just be so steadfast in your life plan. I did not plan that. You think I went and got <laughs> all the way through a master's degree in education 
because I knew I wasn't going to teach. <laughs> I don't think so. But life happened, my priorities changed, and this beautiful creature I created came into the world, and I'm like, oh, I want to spend more time with you. And I could not have imagined that, because to me, I was like, I'm going to, being a teacher is great, you get the summers off with your kids and this and that, but the moment I had a baby, I was like, some, like, I need something a little different. It needs to look a yeah. little different for me. Right. I mean, and that's the other thing, it's like, What's right for me is not what's right for you. So like yeah. you may have been that person that could keep the dog through having a baby. Right. <laughs> it was having a huge negative impact on me. So I had to do something about it. Right. Or I had to, you know, I could not send my child to daycare anymore because it was having a huge negative impact on me. Or my husband who would drop her off in the morning and then cry his way to work. Yeah. Like, it was having negative impact on us and we couldn't do it anymore. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Um, yeah, it's okay. Like, it also reminds me, I don't know if it's just some random movie, but it was a movie, uh, I don't know if any of you have seen it. It's called Lucky Seven, I think. And anyway, it was all about this mom who had cancer and passed away but before she did she kind of wrote out this life plan map of love for her daughter or or just like a life plan about like these experiences and going to college and finding love and having these boyfriends and that number seven was the one you were going to marry and so the whole movie she's just like trying to force this guy into being number seven but realizing that that was just an idea you don't have to stick to the map if you love like right. the love of your life may not be number seven and that's okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it reminds me of that too. Like don't be so steadfast in that life plan. You're not open to the magic that happens in everyday life. Yeah, exactly. All right. Um, the next one, the cost outweighs the benefits and by costs, it could be financial, but it's not always financial. It could also be emotional and just, just like what you are spending in your time and your energy and your money is just not worth the outcome. It's not worth the right. benefits. Yeah. And this is a little bit like that. I'm working really hard and I'm not making progress, but mm -hmm. in this case, you might be making progress like you might be moving forward it's just that what you're getting back isn't worth what you're putting into it mm -hmm. yeah it's like putting in a dollar and getting a dollar and one cent versus right putting in a dollar and getting two dollars <laughs> yes exactly yeah it's not you're getting something but is it really worth it <laughs> Exactly. Or yeah. like if you are, I'm going to use a random example. Well, uh, let's say you, you're mowing the lawn and it is so hard for you to do the yard work. You hate doing it. It takes up all this time and this energy and it is more beneficial for you to hire someone to do it. Like it's okay to think about that from a different perspective. Yeah. Right. And you can see. Like if yeah. you are, yeah, spending time doing that thing instead of working towards your life goals, like spending more time with your kids or right. you know, working on your business. Right. Yeah, of, if the whole I'm point of, yay. yeah, <laughs> if the whole point is to spend more time with your kids, but you're spending all of your time working on a thing like, mm -hmm. eh. yeah. Okay. And let's see, this is our last one here. There's a consistent pattern of failure despite multiple attempts and approaches. So oh, I think everyone hates this one. <laughs> yeah, this is very similar. But like, if you're like, okay, well, we're going to do this one thing. I'm going to try this thing. It didn't work. Cool. I'm going to try this other thing. It didn't work. Cool. I'm going to try this other thing. It didn't work. Cool. At some point, it's okay to say, maybe this is not the thing you should be trying to do. Yes. Yeah. It's, um, it's that kind of the idea that 
we were talking about earlier where there's this mindset of like, just keep going and keep trying and don't give up. And like, you know, it's the, I've learned 101 ways not to make a light bulb or whatever the stupid quote is that you see right. all the time on the motivational posters. It's like, that's good. Motivation is good. Perseverance is good, but not at the cost of your mental health, not at the cost of your physical health or your relationships. Mm-hmm. If you are consistently not just consistently trying a thing, but consistently trying different ways to get to a specific goal and you just can't get there, it might be time to reevaluate and let go of that goal or let go of that idea or whatever business job relationship, whatever, and, and find something else. (laughs) Or else tweak it. Yeah. Or tweak it. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I think of you, Angela, when you decided that you were going to niche down into sh- to taking on Shopify, Shopify, oh. Shopify clients and <laughs> not just all the tech issues under the sun. Oh, that was, it was so a really scary. Hard, yeah, it was a scary, hard decision for you, but it felt right in the moment. Like mm-hmm. it was it was hard on you to be like, OK, I'm working on this one thing. Now I got to switch gears and work on this one. Yep. Thing. I got to switch gears and work on this one thing. For you to say, you know what? No, I'm just going to take Shopify. And if I could just stay in the Shopify lane, my life, my mental health is going to be better. And guess what? It was. Yeah. Yeah. And it was hard. It was hard to quit all of the other things and focus on that. And it it was hard to, because there were still other things that I enjoyed doing. But it was just not going back to the other one. The cost didn't outweigh the benefits. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So, and and I had tried several times to make that work, to make it work so that I could do all the things with all of the people and just was not getting there. And so I finally had to just be like, no, this is not going to work. I have to do something different. Yeah. Yeah. And guess what? You're happier for it. I am. I'm much happier, much less stressed. Yes. So, and like we said, changing paths changing ideas, switching tacks, tweaking things. It's not a failure. It's not giving up on your dreams. It's doing the thing you need to do to get to the goals you have in life, get to your dreams, get to your values. If you want direct support from us, having these conversations and helping you figure out which paths to take next, Feel free to join our membership, Marketing Moms Monthly at marketingmomsmonthly.com. You can even join us for the first month for free. And yes. we're going to answer all your questions, whether they're motherhood or business. And you, you know, we don't claim to have all the answers. We claim to have all the opinions. <laughs> yes, all of the opinions. <laughs> and we want to help. <laughs> and we, we want to help. help. We have your best interests in mind. So yes. um, you can always join us over there. Otherwise, DM us on Instagram. Now, Threads. Threads? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I I, <laughs> I did not. To answer your question earlier, I did not realize that you were threading for us until you said that. Oh. And then I had to go look. Yes. <laughs> I am. I am. And I'm trying a lot of different things. It's kind of fun to just like. Threads it's like our fun. podcast, right? So, like, I can toss things up there without having to do a picture or my face. And Yes. Um, Is it like Twitter? Yes, it is. Why was I not using Twitter? I don't know, but I'm using this. Twitter is, Twitter's a whole other beast. It is exactly, like, functionally, it's exactly like Twitter, but at least right now in the early stages, and I want to note that I am saying this on July 12th, 2023, (laughs) Um, right now in the early stages, the atmosphere on threads is nothing like Twitter. Like, I've Mm. been on Twitter for years, almost 10 years now. Um, and I almost never posted on there. I just kind of sat back with popcorn and watched the dumpster mm-hmm. fire that was Twitter. Um, but Threads has a whole different atmosphere. I described it to some friends as it feels like when the teacher would leave the classroom and everybody would get like really crazy, but like quietly so that nobody else noticed the teacher wasn't in the room. <laughs> like none of the other teachers walking by would notice that we were unsupervised. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's what threads feels like right now everybody's having fun everybody's having a good time everyone seems at least in my little corner of it seems to be putting an effort to try and keep it from becoming toxic like toxic. twitter mm-hmm. um and kind of self-policing the chaos um so it is really yeah. fun right now like functionally yeah it's exactly like twitter if you can do twitter you can do threads so if you're if you're thinking about it you're like oh I don't know it's like a whole new plot it's not it's just Twitter 2.0 yeah I mean of course the algorithm's different and then like oh yeah you can't even like hashtag right now so there's that no you can't there's yeah the algorithm maybe maybe two weeks from now when this comes out you can hashtag right (laughs) yeah now and I will say because it's attached to your Instagram account so when mm-hmm. I first started, I started with my Instagram account is a business account and I, I don't have mm-hmm. like, didn't have a personal Instagram account, but I set up a personal Instagram account um, so that I could have a personal threads account. And because I connected it to like all my Facebook business stuff, it let me follow like a lot of the same people that I was already following with my business. So I kind of pre set my algorithm um, yeah. But I did play with it a little bit before, you know, kind of setting up an algorithm and it, it was fun and it's nice to see. And then I get a notification if somebody you follow on Instagram joins threads, it'll like ping you that they're <laughs> that they're on threads now. <laughs> so every once in a while I get a little ping that like, oh, so and so joined threads. I'm like, ah, there's another one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I do feel bad it's- for all the social media managers. I sent Jesse a funny TikTok. Yeah. Today. Is it's yeah. like a whole new platform and I know it's going to be so hard for people to wrap their head around how to make it. And one of the things it said in the, the TikTok video, the kind of a funny, she said, um, like, I don't want you to panic, but I don't see an analytics button anywhere. And yeah. I had to go look because I was like, well, now I have to look. I switched over to my business threads and I was like oh there isn't an analytics profile anywhere <laughs> or button anywhere oh no and it's MVP minimal level product if it kind of works yes. we're gonna put it out there and test it out it's all good yes It'll exactly good. although I think it would be personally I think it would be fun to have a social media platform that didn't have analytics <laughs> Like you don't you get, to would. get to figure it out you just have to throw it at the wall and see what happens <laughs> Uh, (laughs) all right well we're gonna go thread and uh we will chat at you next week (laughs) thank you for joining us today we're so honored this is where you chose to spend your time if this episode helped you in some way please share it with another mom who needs to hear it we're in this together and if you're ready for next steps free goodies, and more, head over to marketingmomspodcast.com. We'll see you next week.